Tonight, taking steps to protect the most vulnerable from COVID-19. We're asking that it be now more vigilant activity around our long-term care homes and retirement homes. Extra steps are being taken to protect the elderly after a person at a nursing home in B.C. dies from the virus. Plus... Because I'm washing. Washing. singing the praises of proper hand washing. These doctors have some happy advice on how to prevent the spread of the virus. And we'll give you a tour of the condo of the future with all the high tech features of your dreams, but explain why some privacy experts aren't on board. Good evening, I'm Mike Wise. Ontario now has 34 cases of the coronavirus with two new cases announced today. The province also announcing the telehealth system is being inundated with calls as concern grows about the potential spread of COVID-19. Now, health officials maintain the risk to the public is still very low, but they are preparing for that to change. As Lisa Shing tells us, efforts are now ramping up to protect the most vulnerable. First thing we do, the reception will ask that you are not asked, they will require you to use the hand sanitizer. At this long-term care home in downtown Toronto, employees are taking extra precautions to keep residents safe. We were asked to sign in, you know, the usual, you know, tell us who you're coming to see, etc. But what's changed is, do you have any flu-like symptoms? Declare it. Uh, have you been out of the country for the last 14 days? And if those answers are yes, they can't go in. Employees are also told to stay home and encouraged to see a doctor if they have flu-like symptoms. And workers are wiping down handrails and elevator buttons every two hours. Uh, all those common areas, so every two hours, which is an increase. That's not the norm. This after more cases of COVID-19 were reported today in Ontario and several more over the weekend. All were older adults. We don't have community transmission in Ontario. After BC announced its first death today, a man who lived at the Lynn Valley Care Centre where an outbreak was declared, Ontario officials say the virus is not circulating locally, but that could change. And today, a new measure to prepare the most vulnerable. We're asking that there be now more vigilant activity around our long-term care homes and retirement homes. They will be screening people at the door. Dr. David Williams also advises against going to see a loved one in a home if you're sick. Ontario's health minister says the government will also step up efforts. We are looking at uh, sending more um, uh, recommendations to long-term care homes, particularly for advanced screening of staff, visitors, volunteers. And another development today, Reuters is reporting that millions of masks stockpiled by the Ontario government after the SARS outbreak meant for health workers have expired. Now we put that to the Chief Medical Officer of Ontario and he says they're currently being tested. Lisa Shing, CBC News, Toronto. There's a new appeal tonight from health officials in Peel region for passengers on board a flight from Frankfurt on Saturday. Some passengers are being advised to go into self-isolation after a person on board that flight was diagnosed with COVID-19. The advisory affects passengers who were seated on the main deck of Lufthansa flight DHL470 from Frankfurt to Toronto who sat in rows one to four in business class on March 7th. Passengers are directed to self-isolate and call Peel Public Health immediately at 905-799-7700 or at 905-854-2216 in Caledon. All other passengers aboard that flight should self-monitor for signs of cough, fever or respiratory Ill issues and call Peel Public Health if any symptoms arise. Now, one person now in self-isolation is a Toronto City Councillor who says he came into contact with someone who has since been diagnosed with COVID-19. Josh Matlow says that person was at a conference in Washington, D.C. Matlow came into contact with him last, or that person on Thursday. He doesn't have any symptoms, but says out of an abundance of caution, he will be self-isolating until March 20th. That's at the advice of the city's medical officer of health. On this weekend, Matt Lowe was at the Ontario Liberal Leadership Convention supporting MPP Michael Coteau. We spoke with Matt Lowe over the phone this afternoon. So I've set up, uh, set up a, a scenario in, in my basement where uh, this is where I'm going to be living for the next uh, two weeks. I won't be able to tell you what my existence is going to be like until I actually live this. It's a very surreal scenario to be in. But I'm also very confident that I'm getting great advice from uh, like a really remarkable group of people in our public health teams who are doing incredible work. And, you know, 
there, there are lots of stories out there of people who are seeking their advice and help. And, you know, I'm one of them. Um, and I'm, I'm getting great advice and I'm going to follow it. And of course, the best source for advice is from doctors. And tonight, they're not only saying don't panic around this, they're saying be happy. A group of doctors gathered to record a music video this evening about the importance of hand washing. Stressing ordinary soap and water will help protect you. you think less about Purell and more about Ferrell. Angelina King has more. Because I'm washing. Wash your hands all around from the bottom to the top. These doctors have a challenge for you. Wash your hands for this long. It's just what you gotta do. As the number of COVID-19 cases continue to rise in Ontario, this choir of doctors is spreading a helpful message in a positive way. We all will play a role in trying to um, identify new cases and preventing the spread, but this is one way that we thought we could also, th through the public, get them involved with helping to treat and prevent this disease. The Ontario Medical Association plans to share the video on social media, challenging people to do a better job of washing their hands, to help a catchy tune to sing while using soap, a play on Pharrell's hit song, Happy. It just so happens that when you sing a song and a verse, um, the verse and the chorus translates to 20 seconds of music. That's how long doctors say you should be washing your hands for minimum. The OMA hopes the video will help with the spread of misinformation. Its message, you don't need to wear a mask if you're healthy, avoid touching your eyes, ears, nose and throat and... Wash your hands for 20 seconds because COVID-19, as with many other viruses I would point out, are spread through droplet contact, which means they're spread through contact with your hands. So proper hand washing is extremely important. Some of the doctors say the unknown that comes along with the outbreak can add stress at work and at home, but singing helps. This is on our minds quite a bit, and when we sing, we can't really think of anything else. It definitely lifts us all up. Angelina King, CBC News, Toronto. Kelly Kennedy is here with a first look at the forecast. I hope you enjoyed today's weather. <laughs> yeah, that's basically the story, right, Mike? And, you know, with the temperatures we saw, not surprising when you start off so warm. We had a good start. These are the temperatures from 6 a.m. this morning. So it was already 9 degrees in Toronto. So then you can imagine into the afternoon, yeah, by about 3 o'clock, up to just about 17 degrees. So... That was with the dry conditions. Different story. We have lighter precipitation. It's going to get heavier through the overnight, though. And then we're going to be seeing, this is 7 a.m. tomorrow. That morning commute is definitely going to be a wet one. It's going to move through relatively quickly. So by about 4 o'clock, the afternoon commute should be looking better. We're going to pick up maybe up to about 12 millimeters of rainfall. London, you could see some enhanced amounts. But just know the other thing is it's going to be windy in the morning from the southwest. Still somewhat mild, but in the afternoon, those winds are going to turn around to the north. Northwest. That's what helps to clear things out, but the temperature will fall tomorrow night. Overnight tonight, though, still mild, 8 degrees, 10 degrees tomorrow afternoon. But where we're going after that with those numbers, i got to show you coming up, Mike. Okay, thanks a lot. You're welcome. The weather update is brought to you by Train, the most reliable heating and cooling brand. It's hard to stop a train. The man accused of murdering Tess Ritchie two years ago testified at his own murder trial today. 23-year-old Kalen Schlater is telling his version of events the night he met Ritchie in Toronto's gay village. Ritchie was later found strangled to death. Ali Chiasson was in the classroom, in the courtroom. Kalen Schlater entered the witness box wearing a blue suit and a white dress shirt. His defense attorney gets right to it. Mr. Schlater, did you murder Tess Ritchie? Absolutely not, he responds. Did you sexually assault her, she asks? Absolutely not. In the witness box today, he said it was Richie's idea for the two of them to walk to the stairwell to hook up. Surveillance footage shows Schlater leaving alone after about 45 minutes. Today, he said she was alive when he left and that he regrets not staying with her to make sure she got home safe, saying, quote, I should have stayed with her. Richie's family visibly recoiled in their seats when he said that. Schlater appeared to get emotional while talking about learning that Richie died of neck compression. His face was red and he used a tissue to wipe his eyes. He has shown some emotion in court before when viewing photos of her dead body. 
Last week, an undercover cop testified that Schlater told him he only pretended to get emotional when detectives showed him those same photos after his arrest. The jury has also heard testimony from a former cellmate turned informant who said Schlater confessed to strangling Richie with his scarf. Today, Schlater denied the confession as well as the crime. That same informant testified that Schlater would cry himself to sleep at night, but not because he had any remorse for Tess Ritchie, but only because he missed his family. Defense attorney Lydia Riva asked her client about that on the stand today, and he said he cries because he missed his family. He felt bad for Tess Ritchie and, quote, he was in jail for something he didn't do. The Crown begins their cross-examination tomorrow morning. Ali Chias on CBC News, Toronto. We have some movement on the education front tonight. The union representing public elementary teachers is set to resume contract talks with the government on Wednesday. The minister had an opportunity now to avoid further disruptions by reaching a fair deal with ETFO prior to March 23rd. If these talks are unsuccessful, ETFO will resume strike action on the Monday following March break. Earlier this year, the union said it was close to an agreement on several key issues before government negotiators changed positions at the last minute. Education Minister Stephen Lecce made concessions on two major issues last week. Instead of allowing the average high school class size to be 28 students, he said the government would keep it at 23. He also budged on another key issue, mandatory e-learning, saying the government would allow students to opt out of e-learning courses. Well, just weeks after the City of Toronto reached a last-minute deal with its outside workers comes word 20,000 inside workers could walk off the job first thing Saturday morning. That could shut down recreation centres and city-run daycares. But the city says many critical services will be left running even if a work short, uh, stoppage happens. Emergency response by Toronto Police, fire services and paramedic services will not be impacted. Um, the Toronto uh, Transit Commission and the Toronto Community Housing are not affected as they are represented by different bargaining units or are designated essential services. Uh, legislation also requires service at long-term homes to continue. And a strike would also not hurt efforts to contain COVID-19. Critical operations with Toronto Public Health will be maintained in the event of a labour disruption. The city and CUPE Local 79 are continuing talks in hopes of reaching a deal. Coming up, we'll show you what your future condo could look like with voice-activated blinds, touchscreen privacy panels, and a hands-free automated toilet. Stay with us. Some financial support is coming for businesses suffering because of ongoing construction of the Eglinton Crosstown LRT. The Ontario government is pledging to provide $3 million. 
A letter from Transportation Minister Carolyn Mulroney to Mayor John Tory says the money will be made available as soon as possible. This after Metrolinx announced last month that the project would not be completed on schedule, slated to open well into 2022 rather than next year. Businesses along the route have long complained about not being able to operate during the construction, which began in 2013. Mulroney says the money will go towards marketing, promotion, and cleanup assistance. And there's a move afoot to try to save a public transit discount that's set to expend, expire at the end of the month. It's for people who take both Go Transit and the TTC. It knocks $1.50 off fares when transferring. But the Ontario government says it won't renew that deal. Nick Bouvier has more. I'm going to school um, from September really straight until May. Uh, so that's a significant amount of money on transit. In her daily commute from Burlington to York University, Sarah Westerhoff rides a Go bus and the TTC subway. Soon, she'll be paying full fares on both services. I was confused. Um, it seems to be a program that uh, like works well. The students who are aware are angry, and I think it's going to come as a shock to many students. In 2017, the previous Liberal government introduced a $1.50 discount for people moving between the GO and TTC. The idea was to avoid punishing people for crossing transit boundaries. If a rider used the discount every workday of the year, it would add up to more than $700. That's not good for our city, it's not good for transit, it's not good for city building. NDP transit critic Jessica Bell is calling for a last minute reversal. We do know how to increase ridership, and we do know how to improve transit, and it means offering fair discounts where we can. At Queen's Park today, the Ford government said it had no plans to extend the program. Our ministry is aware that the contract uh, is nearing its end on March 31st, and that's thanks to the Kathleen Wynne and Del Duca government that uh, did not budget appropriate, appropriately to keep this program going. But TTC decision makers say the province must find a way to keep the program alive, and that letting it expire will make it harder and more expensive to get around. To wind it down, as will happen at the end of this month, before you have a proposal for what you're replacing it with, is a big step backwards. The province says it is considering new programs to improve affordability and that more details will be available in the coming days. Nick Boisvert, CBC News, Toronto. If you've ever wanted to live in a fully tricked out smart home, or at least one Toronto developer has got a place for you, Tridel is showing off a new demo unit on York Street to show just what today's technology is capable of. Everything from voice activated blinds to toilets with remote control. But as Taylor Simmons found out, with convenience comes privacy concerns. What used to seem impossible or a thing of Bond movies is now at our fingertips. Computer, welcome. Ah. Yeah, so the lights come on, the shades roll up. It's all tied into our smart home system. And for the bathroom in this condo, you can pee in the same toilet as Drake. Uh, yeah, that's what's pretty special about this toilet. So it's actually the same toilet that Drake has in his own home. Drake has it actually set up to Tupac as opposed to elevator music. And lastly, we have the master bedroom. Right, this one's something special. So I can say, computer, turn glass on. Whoa! And now the glass goes from opaque to transparent. The idea behind this was that we want to provide the best of both worlds in terms of transparency and privacy. This condo is a lot, but Tridel says their customers want more of it. They want to be able to uh, add features like uh, digital thermostats. They want to do things like digital door locks um, and have um, you know, wireless charging points put it throughout their suite. What kind of data is being collected and who gets access to it? But according to this privacy expert, although smart tech can have its perks, it can also come with a cost. The risk there is that you've got a device in your home that is learning about your behavior sharing that data with a third party. Brenda in apartment 2B has her temperature set three degrees higher than everybody else during the daytime. She's wasting energy. She's costing our building money. What should we do about that? For Tridel's part, they say they've begun adding their own network infrastructure to their buildings. On our end, this is mostly just to ensure the security. We don't necessarily do anything with the data uh, at this stage, but uh, it's more just to ensure that the, the, the privacy is kept and that way it's not, it's not um, accessed by other people. Turning on shower. 
Tridell says while certain features will become standard in their units, residents have the choice to opt in to others. Of course, for this condo at least, expect to pay a few million to get them. Taylor Simmons, CBC News, Toronto. Well, a live shot of our skyline tonight, it's shaping up to be a rainy overnight period in Toronto. Collette will tell us when you'll need an umbrella tomorrow morning, right after the break. Mark Gasol is sitting out tonight's Raptors game against the Jazz after he was injured last night. He's now on injured injury management and just returned to the lineup during last night's game against the Sacramento Kings. He'd been out for 15 games with that left hamstring injury. Fred Van Vliet also out tonight uh, for this game against Utah. Right now in the final few seconds of the fourth, Toronto is up 97-92. Colette's back with their extended forecast. So we started Monday, we started the week on a high note. Mm -hmm. And where is it going to go from here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, didn't do too badly on Sunday. Today, you're right, we kind of peaked. But there are changes coming and uh, moving in right now. So we've got the rain coming in that's going to continue. Gets heavier after midnight, really. Just some scattered stuff that's been lighter. But we'll see that getting heavier. And that l does linger into the morning commute and through much of the day tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon, it will be clearing out. We'll stay mild until that cold front sweeps that rain out of here so that means as we go into tuesday night that's why we'll see the temperatures begin to plummet and cooler air moves in for wednesday but then hey take heart by the end of the week did you see that yeah mild again although we'll have to take it with some more rain coming at us so that is the kind of pattern that we are into this is tomorrow morning where i say the morning commute is going to be a wet one and then also some areas back towards uh, water wellington region towards london kitchener you may get some enhanced amounts of the rainfall but it carries on into the afternoon hours wet through the noon hour by about 3 p.m though or somewhere in that neighborhood will start to clear earlier to the northwest and then all the way through and we'll get into a trend where those winds are going to be quite gusty gusting to 40 50 kilometers an hour from the northwest so it's going to be a big change in terms of how it's going to feel a look into wednesday cloud cover for sure with cooler air in place we may see a little bit of light 
precipitation in the form perhaps of some flurries into the latter part of Wednesday. So do keep that in mind. Overnight tonight, though, the wet conditions throughout southwestern Ontario. Keeping an eye on you there, Chatham Kent, all kinds of problems you've been seeing there along the lake shore. But we're looking at seven degrees for our overnight readings here for your tomorrow or tonight in the GTA, I should say, also seven to eight degrees with those wet conditions tonight. And then a look at what happens as we go into tomorrow. We're going to find the temperature up to 10 degrees, but then it will begin to fall through the afternoon. So later afternoon, we're getting down to four, but mild before that, cooler Wednesday, and then we start to see that rebound coming back at us once again. Not like today's temperatures, but at least back to a bit warmer. That's right. Thanks, Colette. You're welcome. Sometimes all it takes is just a little bit of encouragement. Someone anyone to believe in you and and hopefully that's what we're offering these kids today olympic gold medalist tessa virtue was in toronto today paying a surprise visit to a group of young skaters at the west toronto skating club we'll take you there after the break Canadian Olympic ice dancing champion Tessa Virtue paid a surprise visit to a group of young skaters at the West Toronto Skating Club today. Ready? One, two, three, Barbie! What they're doing to encourage kids to be limitless and dream big and to pursue their passions is so critical, especially nowadays. I mean, kids are faced with so much pressure and I love that we're bolstering this sense of self-worth. Uh, Virtue is working with the next generation of Olympic hopefuls to help boost morale and interest in the sport. We were all surprised when she just came skating onto the ice. It was really amazing. It's really happy because like, she can give us pointers for what we can do better next time. And she also told us that just follow your dreams. It can be anything. You can see from the free swag, she's an, an ambassador for the Barbie brand. She'll be making some guest appearances across the province later this year as well. 
Well, that's our newscast for tonight. Tomorrow on Q, Tom Power speaks with Alessia Cara. She is gearing up, of course, to host the Juno Awards this weekend in Saskatchewan. She's also nominated in six categories. They'll talk about the highs and lows of touring. You can catch that tomorrow starting at 10 a.m. on CBC Radio 1. I'll see you back here tomorrow night at 11. Good night.